Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make these fun applique leaf blocks. We're going to use these to build a table runner and we need fat quarters to make the blocks with. So I have this group of grunge fabrics from Moda and they're all fall colors. We only need five of them so let's pick out the colors we're going to use. My fabrics happen to be fall colors, but you do not have to use only fall colors for your leaves. You also don't have to use solids or almost solids. You could use batiks or prints, but you want to pick out five that have a little bit of contrast. So those two are a little too close. I like that. That's nice. And I think we'll go with those five right there. The first step is to iron up our fat quarters. It's always a good idea to iron fabric before you cut it. And for applique work, I also use steam to make sure these are completely flat because we will have a better outcome with our appliques then. The next step is to cut out the squares we need for the backgrounds. And because this is my pattern, I can give you the sizes we need. And we need two eight inch squares. So this is a free pattern and we have it available as the first link right below this video. And if you're making this project at home, I would recommend that you use that as a reference. We'll set this part aside for the leaves and we're cutting two eight inch squares from this piece here. The next step is to cut out the leaf applique and stem shapes. And these are included in the free pattern. And before we cut them, we need to transfer these onto a fusible product. So I like to use Heat and Bond Light Sewable. This is a product that we can iron onto our fabric and then fuse it to our background, making it really easy to do the appliques. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this also into some eight and a half inch, into some eight inch squares. This material has a bumpy side, that's where the glue is, and a paper side, and we want to draw on the paper side. So we're going to put this right over our templates, and I'm just going to trace these lines with a pencil. And even if my tracing isn't perfect, it doesn't matter because I will be able to even out the edges when I do the cutting. Take one of your leftover pieces and we're going to put it on the ironing board with the right side down. Then we're going to take our fusible and we're going to put it on top of the back of the fabric. So remember, the glue dots are down. They are up against the fabric. I'm using a medium heat setting and it's dry. There's no steam and it takes about two seconds in every spot to make sure that this is all completely fused on there. Now we can go ahead and cut out these shapes. So I like to use a nice sharp pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut along the lines. And again, if my drawing wasn't perfect, I can even it out right now with the scissors. So these are the pieces we need and we need to take the paper off of the back. It's pretty easy. You can just rip a little bit of the edge there and the paper ripped, and then this will peel right off. See how it looks kind of shiny on there? That's the glue that's left on there. Next, we need to place the leaves and the stem onto the background. And I'm going to use all three of the same color leaves. You can mix them up. You can use multicolored if you like. I just think this will look a little bit better all in one color. 
So I'm going to put the stem here right underneath that. And before I fuse these on, I'm going to trim off this little bit of extra because otherwise it's going to end up going on to my ironing board. So this is also very easy to get these on here. You can just kind of tack it down with your iron, then hold your iron down. If you're using a different kind of fusible, it may have other directions. Some of them you steam, some you put a press cloth over, but this one's particularly easy. All we have to do is put that medium hot iron over everything for a few seconds and it's glued right on there. I'm heading over to the sewing machine with the applique block. I'm not going to use my regular industrial machine because it only goes forwards and backwards. I'm going to use an all-purpose home machine. It's a Singer. It's kind of an entry-level model, but it's got a lot of different stitches you can do. So I've chosen the number three here. That's just a simple zigzag stitch. So that's why I've got three up here. Then this is the stitch width. I'm using three right now, and the stitch length that's a 0.5, so the stitches will be very tight together. And I always do a practice piece before I start on my actual work, so I, make, I can make sure the stitch looks like what I want. Every time I applique, I put a piece of paper under here, and that stabilizes the um, fabric, so it keeps it nice and flat. Let's see what it looks like here. take a look. That is a nice width. So that is going to outline everything. It almost looks like we drew on there with a marker. So I like that um, stitch uh, size there. Now when you applique, you want to try to sew with the needle hitting right outside your fabric and then covering up quite a bit of it. You can't tell once I've stitched, but that's what I'm trying to do. Since this is ironed on, it really doesn't matter if you go too far towards the edge, but I still like to cover as much of this piece as I can and have the needle hit right outside the edge there. I've got my square here on top of the paper. The first thing I'm gonna stitch is the stem. I'm gonna head all the way toward that top leaf. Now when I get here, I'm going to put my needle down on the outside of this leaf, pivot just a little, and then go around the leaf. As I come toward the tip of the leaf there, I'm gonna sew all the way to the edge and then put my needle down. Usually I have to do that by hand. Then I'm going to lift the presser foot and pivot around, put the presser foot down again, and then keep going. Let's do this first leaf here. We can start right at the tip. And I frequently find myself hand doing a, several stitches like that. trying to get it exactly where I want it to start that next part of the stitching. So feel free to adjust a little if you want. And that's what it looks like all around the edges of the leaves. They do look nice, but it'll look a lot nicer if we add 
some little details in here, some little veins. So I'm gonna change the stitch. I'm gonna use it a little bit narrower. So instead of three, I'm gonna use two. So let's see, I think it's that one. So now my stitch width is gonna be a little bit narrower. And I'm not gonna mark this. I'm just going to make a gentle curved line from this end of the leaf. And I'm just gonna to point towards the other end. Keeping that same width, I'm going to do the other two leaves. And I really feel like it's better to not mark them because you want them to look a little bit abstract. And you know every leaf is slightly different anyway. <laughs> to add the tiny veins that go here, we want the stitch even narrower. So let's move this down to one for the stitch width, so it's even narrower. And again, I'm not gonna mark these. I'm just going to make some lines like this, start right at the center, and just make a gentle curved line. It doesn't have to go all the way out. And I think two or three on each side of the center will be enough. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other two leaves, then we'll trim all those threads off. I purposefully left all of the threads on there because before I trim them, I'm going to use something called Freycheck. This is a glue product, and these, these threads here, they're not back tacked or anything, and they could come undone. So everywhere I stopped and started stitching, I'm putting just a tiny little dot of this fray check. It dries clear, it doesn't leave a big lump of anything, but that will keep all these threads from coming undone. Even if we use this table runner over and over, put it in the wash, this will make it very durable. That just takes a few moments to dry and I can trim all of these threads now without fear of pulling out any stitches. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. We don't want all these threads because it'll make it hard to get the paper off. The next step is to get all this paper off. Because our stitches were so small, the paper just rips right off. And because we used that fray check on everything, we don't have to worry about pulling any stitches out when we tear this away. There is a tiny bit of paper left underneath our stitching, but I never worry about it. It's such a tiny, tiny amount. It's not going to make any difference at all. The first block is all done. And you can see I've got several others ready to go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all appliqued. I've got all 10 done, and I went ahead and stitched them together into a two by five block table runner top. The next thing I'm going to do is put a little border around it. I'm gonna cut it two inches wide, and I have an extra fat quarter here. So I'm gonna cut it from the fat quarter. That'll look really nice around there. Now, if you don't have a fat quarter, you can use a quarter yard and just cut your strips two inches wide and stitch them all the way around. The border is stitched all the way around and now we need a backing for this. If you're going to use yardage, you need a yard and a quarter because it turned out about 18 by 40 and a half inches. I have three extra fat quarters here from my bundle. So I'm going to take these fat quarters and I'm just going to sew them side by side and that will give me enough for the backing. I've got the back on, it's all quilted and the whole table runner is done now.
the binding, just took one more fat quarter, or of course you could use a quarter yard. So there's 10 of the squares. For the quilting, all I did was go between all the squares in the ditch here, and then I went around the leaves. So I just circled around there. It was very easy to do, and I think it makes the leaf pop up a little bit. The leaves look like they have a little bit of dimension. The back side, the quilting is showing. You can see those leaf shapes there, and we've got the three different colors, and I think the back side is very interesting as well. I like the binding with a slight contrast in color, but not a lot different. So the runner turned out 18 by 40, which is a nice size for the middle of your table. You could also hang it up and use it as a wall hanging. It's very easy to make it bigger. Just use more fat quarters. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. At the end of each video, we do a giveaway. Today, you can win this quilt. It's called Twinkle Little Star. It's got all these twirling little stars here. It's got fabrics from uh, layer cake squares. And we have a video that shows you how to make it. But today, you can enter to win it. So it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link that's right below this video and you put in your name and your email address, and we can ship this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.